Hey, welcome back, gamers, to Gamer Guide Channel. I am Roland in Robocraft, and in this episode, we're going to be looking at some cruisers instead of flyers, and some things I want to put together just to kind of help combat a lot of the flyers you see out there, and also just because it's fun to play something different than a uh, flyer. Uh, so this first vehicle here you see is my Resistance Rover, and I call it the Resistance Rover because I saw the Star Wars movie, and I was just kind of inspired to do something Star Wars-esque. Uh, for one of my cruisers. So I put together this guy and uh, colored it, of course, orange and white, kind of the Resistance or Rebel Alliance colors. Uh, it is a little bit modeled after my Viking series, if you remember that. Uh, but of course, with no pilot seat, you have a little bit more liberty. Uh, so I just put seven guns on it. Not a lot of guns compared to what you see a lot of tanks having. Uh, but I made it extra beefy and put on eight wheels, and uh, it's real quick and takes a lot of damage from air vehicles. As air vehicles are pretty much the predominant threat right now in Robocraft until we have some of the new updates. Uh, but yeah, I like this a lot. It's a lot of fun to play, and I think it looks pretty slick for a uh, quick moving heavy vehicle. And something that's a lot of fun to play in deathmatch games. So I predominantly be taking it out into deathmatch, but a couple of battle, battle arena unranked games uh, here and there. Probably not something that I take into a uh, ranked game and stuff like that, but at least has the potential to get out, do some damage to those fusion towers, and then be able to still drive back and get into the shield and stuff like that uh, without getting totally blown to bits by bombers and thruster sticks, as that's kind of the uh, kind of the popular thing of the day. So that's my first one. The second vehicle I put together is a uh, XI vehicle, new one. Uh, this is called the Ninja and uses some of the technology you see in some of the most popular flyers right now, like the Tesseract, uh, using that corner slope armor and that same corner slope armor triforcing, basically, to uh, protect its major components and then uh, suspends, basically, with the longest arrow rods, uh, keeping the components on the inside safe while also making the vehicle super duper light. So I put six wheels on the same. I put three cheetah thrusters powering the drive along with the uh, downward thrusters to let it climb up walls and stuff. And then I put six of these sniper rifles on top along with one cleanup Tesla blade mounted up a little higher than I normally would do it because I wanted to be able to clear some of those uh, different ramps on the s and uh, slopes to be able to climb up walls a little bit easier. So um, I kind of modeled this a little bit after my Armadillo and a little bit after my uh, XI series, uh, but with the new tech and stuff like that, I think it's a more viable uh, version of a sniper vehicle and something that allows a person to get out quickly into the field, uh, shoot down whatever uh, it needs to hit, including some of the fusion towers, which I feel snipers need to pay, play a more active role in taking fusion towers in the game. So I wanted to make something quick so we can go out there, uh, take out the fusion towers, or take out parts of the fusion core and then be quick enough to get away from air vehicles or ground vehicles and uh, also be nimble enough to get up walls and things like that uh, with the light design and the armor on it being separated from the functional components. Um, so I like this a lot and um, I just wanted to do something that was going to give some of the air vehicles some competition so people who are talented at uh, playing snipers in this game have a shot. I've also noted in this game, too, that uh, it seems like it's a little bit easier to hit targets now when moving. Beforehand, um, when you were trying to move and hit a target, you would just kind of miss wildly. But now I feel like, you know, you get pretty accurate. You don't always hit uh, center mass, but wherever the red dot is, is exactly where you're, uh, you're hitting, as long as your guns have turned in time. So I like that a lot. Um, so here at Overclock 1, um, I'm getting up to about 160, it looks like. Uh, well, actually, 176 uh, going in a straight line. So it's pretty fast for Overclock 1. And at Overclock 4, which you'll be playing most of your deathmatch games at, that's the equivalent of it. Uh, I guess we went down to 5. Let's turn it down one. At Overclock 4, which you play most deathmatch games at, uh, it's super fast. You know, get, getting up to, let's see how fast we can go here across the uh, Tundra. There we go. Getting up to, can we get 200? I think so. 200 and almost 207 miles an hour. So if you're playing in uh, battle arena mode, I wanted something that's gonna be super fast and uh, be able to get out across to wherever you want to station yourself, uh, be able to scale walls and stuff too. Take your shots and then get back if you need to, if you're being chased by other aircraft and stuff. So over 200 miles an hour at overclock four and at overclock uh, 10, you're now able to get to about 213 miles an hour. So it doesn't really gain a whole lot of speed and momentum at the higher overclocks, but certainly enough where uh, people are going to have a hard time catching up, especially if they're land-based. 
but even thruster sticks and stuff, um, you'll have a good shot of getting back to cover or getting back to your base if you decide to play goalie and keep some of the uh, flyers away from from your base. Uh, this is a good way to go without having to have legs or be a flyer um, and rail guns. Basically, the armor on this provides you an alternative option by being able to take damage well and be quick. So anyway, that's it. I'm going to put both of these robots, the Resistance Rover and the XI-88 Ninja, on the shop. Um, I will be taking off all of the GC parts. So if you are interested in uh, playing this robot, but uh, you don't want to spend GC for it, definitely check that out. You can check it out underneath the Rollin account, which is uh, W-R-A-U-L-I-N. Uh, that's my secondary account that I actually play most of the time, have most of my robots on. Um, so definitely do that, and if you see me in Robocraft, you can always give me a shout out uh, in my uh, account under Rollin or Gamer Guide. That's both me. And um, thanks a lot, guys. If you're new here, please subscribe to the channel, and I'd appreciate a thumbs up on the video too. Let's me know you guys uh, like this and you want to see some more Robocraft videos, and uh, that you want to support me here at the channel, which I appreciate. I'm almost at uh, 4,000 subscribers, uh, so thank you very much for helping me get there. It's very cool as a part-time YouTuber. Uh, it's neat to be able to uh, have so many followers and have people in the game say hello to me and stuff and uh, like my work and whatnot too. So anyway, guys, thanks so much, and I'll see you in my next video here on Gamer Guy channel. Later.